Okay, the last little bit I want to show you is how to make the cloaks for the characters. So this will apply to Mary, Joseph, all three shepherds and one of the kings. The other two kings, let me grab one of them here, their cloaks are slightly different in that they don't have the hood right up over the head. So actually the netting technique is exactly the same, so you'll get to see how all that works, but I just want to show you the shepherd style cloak for the moment. So let's put you two back to one side. Now this starts with the circular tubular netting that you were using for the body, so some of that's going to feel familiar, but because we haven't got a body or a head to anchor it onto at this point, we're actually going to do three rows of peyote stitch to begin with. So you're going to start by picking up three beads, slide them along the thread, and do watch carefully because the pattern instructions tell you how long a tail thread to leave. So if you remember I mentioned in the head demonstration, the tail thread is this short piece on the other end, so the working thread is the thread that goes through your needle, tail thread is the other end. I'm just going to knot that twice so those three little beads are held firmly in place and they're in a, a sort of circle. Then I want to take the needle through the first bead and that's just to pull the knot inside the bead. So this first row here is actually circular peyote stitch and we're going to add a couple of beads, pass through the next bead in the circle and once again add a couple of beads through the next bead in the circle. And circular peyote, rather like the tubular netting, has a little step up. So in this final stitch, we're going to add on our couple of beads. We're passing through the last bead in the circle, then pull those in tight. And mind the work doesn't flip around. You've got to watch that. If it flips around, you can end up going the wrong way around your circle again. So we've finished that row, we're just going to step up by passing through the first bead in that first pair that we've added. So we've got a strange little shape here now. Now the next row, I'll use a different colour bead so you can see how this is all fitting together. So we're going to add one bead that sits in between your little pair, add one bead, go through the next bead from your last row, Again, add one bead, go through the next bead from your last row. So if I show you, you can see those new beads slotting in between the beads from row two. Add one more bead and through the next one. Make sure you pull them in tight each time, you want nice firm tension for this. This is bead number five going in. And bead number six is the final one in this row. So again, we've got to pass through that bead, which was where we started this row, and then step up to go through the first bead that we added in the row. Now from this point, we're gonna start using the netting technique. So instead of adding one bead, we're going to put three on the needle through the next bead from the previous row. So again, if I use the different colour beads, you can see what's going on. And again, this row is going to have six stitches in it. So be aware, each stitch has got your three beads. And we're just going to get stitch number four in place. Again, just watch the thread doesn't twist as you pull all these loops into place. Stitch number five goes in. And guess what's coming up? Stitch number six and your step up. So because we're now onto netting, we're going to step up through the first two beads in that first loop. So you're ending up coming out of the middle bead in your little group. Right, next row, let's change colours again. And this is going to increase things out. So I'm putting five beads on each stitch this time. And again, you're aiming for that middle bead in the loop from your previous row. So if you've pulled your loops in tight, 
you'll actually find those middle beads are sticking out ready to use. If your loops are a bit wobbly, then you might have to count the beads and make sure you're going through each one. But if you take care on each stitch, you can stop and you can adjust the thread and make sure the beads are sitting where you want them to. Just remember it's not a race. So we're getting there on this row. And just move that tail thread out the way. Sometimes if you don't need to use it again, you can stitch a tail thread in. So this is quite a good point to do that. But if your pattern said, keep a long tail thread to use later, make sure you don't do anything with the tail because you're going to come back and use it later on. So it's my final stitch going in. And again, I've got my step up. So this time it's going to go through three beads. So we're coming out of the middle bead in that loop. Now the actual cloak has an extra row of five beads going on. I'm going to cut out a step and just show you how we convert from that circle to going back and forth along to create the long bit for the, the cloak. So this next row starts in the same way with five beads going on. Here we are. And you're going to find that because we haven't kept increasing this row is going to start to pull things up into more of a sort of bowl shape, which is exactly what you want to happen because that's going to fit nicely over the head. So we're getting towards the end. Oh, and it looks like I made a mistake in that stitch. I've only got four beads, so we'll pretend I'm going through the middle bead there. Now, this is stitch number five for this row. And we're not going to add in the sixth stitch. What we're going to do is start moving back around the other way. So turn it over so I can keep going in a direction that feels comfortable. I'm actually going to pick up seven beads this time. And in fact, I'll switch over to the red so we can see the, the change over. So once again, you're going through that middle bead. It's just that you're doubling back on yourself. You'll want to pull this in tight because as you try and go through the middle bead in that final loop, there isn't much anchoring it. So that loop's going to try and come loose. So pull everything up tight. Once you get onto the second stitch, it gets a bit easier. So again, through the central bead your tail thread out the way and another seven beads going on and through that central bead and we're getting to the end of this row just one more stitch to do after this Again, make sure you don't accidentally slip through two beads. It can happen, it's very easy. So again, we've got to that last loop. Just find that middle bead through there. So that finishes the row and you're just gonna turn around, and do exactly the same as we did again. So we'll pick up five, no, seven even. Four, five, six, seven beads. And you're going to go back through the middle bead in that loop. So it'll be bead number four this time. So as you can see, we're starting to get this flat area that's going to pull down. And that's all you're going to keep doing for the rest of the cloak. Uh, keep following the bead counts in the pattern and you're just going to work back and forth around your, well, it's not quite a semicircle, but part way around till your cloak's long enough to fit your character. So there you go.